Return to Free and Compulsory Education Second Amendment Bill 2017. Context. Lots at all has passed the right of children to free and compulsory education Second Amendment Bill 2017 to abolish the no detention policy and Bill 2017 to abolish the no detention policy in schools. Highlights of the bill. The bill amends the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2009. The act was having provision of no detention policy i.e. no child can be held back in any class until completion of elementary school classes 1 to 8. The bill amends provision related to no detention policy in the parent act to empower central or state government to allow schools to hold back child in class 5, class 8, or in both classes. It mandates conducting regular examination in class 5 and class 8 at end of every academic year. In case child fails class 5, class 8 examinations. He will be given additional instruction and opportunity for re-examination within two months from the declaration of the result. If child fails again in re-examination, he may be held back in class 5, class 8, or in both classes. The bill empowers union and state governments to decide whether to not hold back child in any class till completion of elementary education. Further, Union or state governments will decide manner and conditions subject to which child may be held back. What is no detention policy? According to this provision no child admitted in a school shall be held back in any class. This translates into automatic promotions to the next class every year until class BII. Instead of exams, schools are supposed to hold continuous and comprehensive evaluations CCE for every child. Criticism. The provision had attracted criticism with several states and schools complaining that it compromised on academic rigor and learning levels and quality at schools. The TSR Subramanian Committee for Formulation of a National Policy on Education has also suggested that no detention policy should be discontinued after Class B had recommended restoration of detention provision, remedial coaching and two extra chances to each student such to move to a higher class. The subcommittee of the Central Advisory Board of Education also studied the issue closely and recommended the provisional detention clause at classes V and VIII. In 2013, the parliamentary panel had also asked the ministry to rethink on its policy of automatic promotion up to class VIII. What's important? For prelims, root act, key features, TSR Subramanian Committee. For mains, no detention policy, meaning pro and against arguments. Sources, the Hindu topic, bilateral, regional and global groupings and agreements involving India and slash or affecting India's interests. BRICS Regional Aviation Partnership. Context, the Union Cabinet has approved the signing of Memorandum of Understanding MU amongst BRICS nations on the Regional Aviation Partnership cooperation this Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. The objective is that BRICS countries would benefit from the establishing of an institutional framework to cooperate in the field of civil aviation. Among the areas of cooperation, following the areas have been identified. Public policies and best practices in regional services. Regional airports. Airport infrastructure management and air navigation services. Technical cooperation between regulatory agencies. Environment sustainability including deliberation of global initiatives, qualification and training, other fields as mutually determined, impact. The MU signifies an important landmark in the civil aviation relations between India and other BRICS member states and has the potential to spur greater trade, investment, tourism and cultural exchanges amongst the BRICS nations. What is BRICS? BRICS is the acronym for an association of five major emerging national economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The acronym BRICS was initially formulated in 2001 by economist Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs in a report on growth prospects for the economies of Brazil, Russia, India, and China, which together represented a significant share of the world's production and population. Why does the world need the BRICS? Jim O'Neill's point has been that the world is changing. The leading role of the group of seven G7 and, more broadly, of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD is no longer undisputed. Most multilateral institutions were designed in the era when the West dominated the world. The US and Europe are overrepresented in the IMF and the World Bank. 
Together with Japan, they control most regional development banks as well. This imbalance has been especially clear during the recent global financial crisis when the need for participation by non-G7 countries became evident. This resulted in reviving the Group of 20 G20 and proposals to redistribute voting rights in international financial institutions. But change has been slow and Western countries continue to control the international financial institutions. This is why BRICS summits are so important. These meetings provide a unique forum where non-OECD leaders can discuss global challenges and coordinate their actions within and outside global institutions. The small size of the club and the absence of OECD partners helps in shaping the discussions at the summit.